Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we're going to be doing a little review of how to work with fractions and how to factor. Okay, both these things are going to be extremely important as we go through this unit. So first thing we're going to talk about is adding two fractions together. Now, when we're adding two fractions together, it's going to be very, very important that we get rid of this imp or excuse me, this mixed number and we turn it into an improper fraction. In order to do this, I think of like a backward C. I'm going to go from 12 to 6 and I'm going to multiply and 6 to 2 and I'm going to add. So what this is going to look like is we're going to go 12 times 6, which equals 72, and then I'm going to add what's on my numerator, which is 1, which is going to be 73. And now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my problem. So I'm going to have 2 over 4 plus 73 is going to be my new numerator, but my denominator is going to stay the same, so it's going to stay 12. Once we have this done, in order to add fractions, it's very, very important through this whole unit that we have a common denominator. So is there any way that I can, this is how I check first, can I turn 4 into 12? And I can, I can do it by multiplying by 3. Now it's really important if we do anything to the bottom of our fraction, we have to also do it to the top of our fraction. So now I'm going to rewrite this problem again, and I'm going to get 6 over 12 plus 73 over 12. Now once our denominators are the same, all we're going to do is add what's in our numerators. So we're just going to take 6 plus 73, so I'm going to get 79 over 12. And this is going to be my final answer. Now while we're working with this, we want to double check, triple check, make sure we can't simplify this. If we can't simplify it, we'll leave it as is. In this case, we can't. All right. Very similar to adding fractions is subtracting fractions. So when we go through on this one, we don't have any improper mixed numbers to worry about. We just have to have a common denominator. And if we look again, we can't turn a 4 into 9 by multiplying. So when this happens, I just like to multiply those two numbers together. When we do this, we're going to get 36. So if I want to rewrite this, my common denominator is going to be 36 for both of these. Now I just have to figure out how I got to 36. So when we're doing this, I know I took 9 times 4 to get to 36, so here I'm going to take 9 times 4. If I do it in the denominator, I also have to do it in the numerator. So 5 times 4 is 20. Now I have to do the same thing with my other side. 4, I took this times 9 to get 36, so I also have to take my numerator times 9. So I get 9 here. Once my denominators are the same, which they are, I can leave them as is. So my answer is going to have 36 in the denominator, but my numerators I'm going to subtract. So I have 20 minus 9, which is 11. I can't simplify this, so this is my final answer. Okay, so we have to get those common denominators. Now, multiplying fractions, these are probably my favorite, but first thing we have to do is we have to take care of this improper fraction right here. So again, we have to work backwards. We have to multiply, and then we have to add. So I'm going to take my denominator, which is 5, times my whole number, which is 2, so I get 10. Then I'm going to add my numerator, which is 4, so I get 14. So 14 is my new numerator, so I'm going to get... 14 over 5, because my denominator is going to stay the same, times 1 over 8. Now this is what's awesome about multiplication, is that once we have two improper fractions or two fractions in general, we just have to multiply straight across. So I'm going to take four time, 14 times 1 and I get 14. And then I'm going to take 5 times 8, which gives me 40. Now, this problem, this one is not done because 14 over 40 can be simplified. So we can divide both of these by 2, and I'm going to get 7 over 
20. Now this is my final answer. And you're going to have to do this a lot through this unit is be able to simplify your numbers. So make sure you're paying attention there. So there's our multiplying. Next one we're going to be working with is dividing. So we're going to be dividing these two fractions again. We have to get rid of this mixed number and turn it into an improper fraction. So we'll take 5 times 1, which is just 5, plus 2, which is 7. So when I rewrite this, I'm going to have 7 over 5 divided by 1 over 6. Now, division, this is how I remember division every single time. I go keep, switch, flip. So I'm keeping my first fraction exactly how it was written. So I'm going to have 7 over 5. I'm switching from division to multiplication. And then I'm flipping my second fraction. So I'm going to get 6 over 1. Keep, switch, flip. It's going to be very important for what we're working on during this unit. Once I'm here, I'm going to turn it just like a multiplication problem, so straight across. So I have 7 times 6, which is going to give me 42, and 5 times 1, which gives me 5. Once I'm here, this is it. This is my solution. I can't simplify, and I'm done. So that's working with our fractions. So a lot going on there. Make sure you know what's happening. Now we're going to move on really quick and go over the four super important types of factoring. So our first kind of factoring we're going to go over is greatest common factor. What can I take out of both things? If I look at this problem, 14 and 21, 7 can come out of there. And now if I look, I have an x to the fourth and x squared. I can only take the number of x's that have the smallest exponent. So I can only take out x squared. So here, when I take it out, I have to figure out what's left. So I'm going to take both of these and I take out 7x squared. When I get here, 14 divided by 7 is 2. If I take out two of my x's, I'm left with x squared minus 21 divided by 7, which is 3. And then my x squares in this case are going to cancel. This is going to be my final answer. You will be factoring a kajillion billion times. So you guys, if you have questions, make sure you ask. So there's our greatest common factor. Next kind of factoring we learned was grouping. That means we're going to have four terms and we're going to group two terms, the first two together and the last two together. So I'm going to group my first two terms together and my last two terms together. Once I do this, I'm just going to take out the greatest common factor like I did before. So 2 and 12, I can take out a 2 and then I can take out my smallest exponent so I can take out x squared. Then I need to know what's left over. So if I take out a 2x squared out of both of these, here my 2's cancel, and I'm just left with an x. On the other side, I have 12 divided by 2, so I have a positive 6. But now my x squared is cancel. Now I come over my second problem, and I have to take out my greatest common factor. Now, remember, if there's that negative in front, you have to take that out. So we're going to divide by negative 5. And if you look at this one, these don't both have an x, so that's all we can take out is that negative 5. And then whatever I'm left with, I'm going to have those cancel x. Two negatives make a positive 6. Now to write my answer, very, very important, the, what is in parentheses should be the same. And I'm going to write that once. So I have x plus 6, and then I'm going to write what's left over. So what's left over after I take those out is my 2x squared and my negative 5, and I'm going to put that together. 2x squared minus 5, and this is my answer for grouping. All right, moving on. Okay, we have our AC method. Remember, that's when we're labeling, we're going to have a trinomial, so there's going to be three parts. We're going to have an A, a B, and a C. 
First thing we have to do is we're going to take A times C, and we have to get something that adds up to B. So I'm going to take 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Now I need to come up with two things that multiply to equal negative 6, but add to equal 1. In this case, I'm going to use 3 and negative 2. Now, 3 and negative 2 have to replace this positive x. So I'm going to rewrite my problem. I'm going to keep my 3x squared, but I'm replacing my positive x with the plus 3x minus 2x. And then I put my minus 2 at the end. This right here makes a positive 1x. Then, just like I did before, four terms grouping. Put my first two together, and I'm going to put my last two terms together. So my first two, I can take out a 3x. So if I take 3x out, I'm left with x plus 1. My second group, this negative means I have to take out a negative 2. They don't have any variables in common, so I just take out negative 2. I'm left with x plus 1. Now, when I rewrite my problem, very important, these are the same. So I write that once, x plus 1, and then I take my leftovers. So I have 3x and negative 2. So 3x minus 2 is my other factor. Those are my two factors when I'm using AC on this problem. Okay? All right, last problem, I promise. Last big factor and idea is we're going to talk about difference of perfect squares. Now, first thing when we look at a lot of difference of perfect squares, we have to make sure that everything is a perfect square and we're using subtraction. In this case, it's not. And I have to take out a greatest common factor first, which is going to happen a lot in what we're doing. So in our case, we can take out 5 out of both of these. So my 5 is going to go in front, and I'm left with x squared minus 4. Now if I look at my new problem, x squared is a perfect squared because it's squared. 4 is a perfect squared, and I'm using subtraction. So I can use my difference of squares. Now remember, we can't forget about this 5. That's that super annoying little brother or sister has to come along with us. So I'm going to have my 5 out front, but now that I have difference of perfect squares, I'm just going to write two of them. Remember, one's going to be plus, one's minus. If I took the square root of x squared, I would just get x and x. If I took the square root of 4, I would get 2. And now this one is completely factored. All right, so that's our last kind of factoring. So make sure we know how to do all of those. So make sure that you guys can show me how you can add, subtract, and multiply and divide fractions, how you can change a mixed number into an improper fraction, and how you can still factor using the appropriate methods, which is going to be so huge that you know how to factor. So if you don't, you need to get help ASAP, all right? All right, that is all I have. Thank you for being wonderful, and I will be seeing you later. Bye.